good evening to all uh, oh, thanks for a nice introduction so i'll get on to the topic uh, the impact on nutraceuticals through convergence of biotech artificial intelligence and medical devices uh you know uh till recent times this you know their industries uh, evolving trying to serve patients or consumers so you know on one side you have nutraceuticals and you've got drugs pharmaceuticals biotech medtech all of them are trying to serve only one common target, which is, of course, a patient or a consumer. What has not happened for most of the time is that the learnings and the strength of each faculties being leveraged together to achieve uh, optimal outcome. Thanks to the information sharing that's happening now. Uh, so there's a uh, amazing convergence opportunity that is uh, you know uh, emerging into the market and uh, that makes all the industries very interesting whether you talk of pharmaceuticals i'll stick to nutraceuticals uh, uh, so nutraceuticals is one industry which is actually uh, engaging a lot of uh, expertise from the uh, industries like uh, artificial intelligence or medtech or even biotech and that's what i'm going to take you through the slides uh just quick info uh nutrify india uh this is a platform that i created and there are now 200 industry partners and when i say industry partners it's got professionals from devices design to biotech professionals to nutrition industry to venture capitalists, the government commercial departments, regulators, they're all here, and most of the subjects being discussed here are either on convergence or on the new technologies. It has held a lot, mostly for the startup companies, because they have been able to showcase their you know, technologies and the product innovation in this platform, and, and, and actually has led to three commercialization in the last one month. Uh, so that's what it is and if in case anyone is interested can you know whatsapp at the number which is mentioned here and then i proceed to the topic you know when it comes to drugs we in some time of life would have consumed any kind of drug could be antibiotics or white i mean or any any kind of other drugs that your doctor would have prescribed the question is when it comes to betting on whether the medicine will give me results or not do you bet on the medicine or on the doctor you know you have no idea actually what kind of stuff you're consuming you know they're just multicolored pills and you have no idea what it would do when would it do and hence you bet a lot onto your doctor but when it comes to nutrition the entire emotional bet is on yourself because it's and all of a sudden it becomes too emotional because nutrition supplements dietary supplements or medical nutrition it's it's very personal engaging it has aspiration it has a feeling of love so entire spectrum of emotions start to play when it comes to nutrition uh you know you don't like the taste or you don't like the format or uh, you know you consume it you know, I'm going to take it for 90 days because I, I, I believe that I may have certain outcome and you are in charge of it. And it is this reason of close interaction with a product that you feel will make you healthy is making this industry grow out of proportion. In just next three years, this industry is going to take over pharmaceutical industry, which is probably, which is right now the largest in the world. It is a nutraceutical, which in, it's just a matter of three years is, uh, and the growth rate and the volume it's standing at, it is uh, soon going to be taking over the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, I think by now, most of the people, thanks to information exchange, social media, we all know our health is what we eat. There's nothing great that I can talk about on this. Uh, and we all want to be healthy and you know we do anything and everything right from the uh, no-brainer being going to gym or yoga or actually trying to indulge in 
dietary supplements because we get carried away with what's there on you know accessible on dr google uh some slightly more uh educated or more reading people indulge into the medical foods so those foods are basically uh, supposed to be giving you a uh, health uh, measured health outcome over a period of time so you know there are categories like uh, dietary supplements to medical foods to actually even clinical foods but what we do not know is is this the right supplement for you and how actually you're supposed to have it or when to eat it you have no clue that is your body even going to digest that or if, even if you're able to digest it would that be bioavailable and if it's not bioavailable you're just spending money on something that's not going to give you any result let's have a quick uh, picture of what's happening in india in the population it is slightly alarming because 690 million people in india are calorific sufficient but malnourished and trust me i would not be surprised most of them are right now in this conference uh to listening then there are about 450 million people who are just thoroughly malnourished and under calorie and so on but then when you add these two population what it shows is that absolute majority of indians are malnourished now let's put this information into an application our country as per the media release is targeting to be a us dollar 10 trillion dollar economy by 2030 and that means we are talking of quadrupling our economy now if we expect us to be you know quadrupling the economy who's going to do it it is the people of india they're going to be working they're going to take up that stress and deliver it now with this kind of malnourishment and exposing this audience or uh, this population to the work stress trust me uh, we may achieve the targets for sure but then there would be an enormous medical expense shooting up because malnourishment with stress will lead to all kind of lifestyle diseases right from diabetes blood pressure cancer and the whole menu card now with all this of course thanks to the information uh, age and information access and dr google all around people have resorted to nutraceuticals because they believe that they would be able to not only you know take care of the health but make them more productive more active and the whole more 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 that is leading to a market base of about us dollar 8 billion so currently india's 8 billion dollar market growing at 10 percent per annum now this is a very 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 small number because when you look at the global international nutraceutical market uh one reason could be that uh, because uh the one the regulatory recently has become more stringent has given shape and structure to the industry that's one and second is of course uh, thanks to the economic growth people have a uh, dispensable income which they want to put onto their quality of health that is leading to growth and has created this category and thanks to the internet and mobile phones it's helping people to access information, making them learn it, and they're indulging in, uh, you know, nutraceuticals. Uh, what is very interesting is both, uh, in fact, all the medical foods, which is a highly specialized category, the nutritional supplements, the fortified foods and beverages, all are actually growing at substantial uh, rate in India, which makes India the most attractive market in the world while it is the smallest market in the world but then of course the potential of growth and the potential the size is huge and that makes india pretty attractive now what are the challenges you know to the industry these are the most common challenges you know what format trust me you and i would not we're not born consuming tablets and capsules we for all our lives have consumed food water drinks beverages 
so format is very important then bioavailability that you know just you cannot pick up anything off the shelf and expect result probably bioavailability could not be there and hence no result compliance you know nutraceuticals are not drugs and they don't give you result overnight it may take minimum 22 days to a month for anything to happen and then you're supposed to sustain it for at least for 90 days um people of today are into instant gratification world have medicine be be good feel good next day same time two days and then here we're talking of 90 days so compliance becomes a challenge because if you're consuming tablets capsules you may not remember to have it every day it's not a drug and you're not into a serious medical problem that you need it or else you're going to have problem um discipline very very people oriented there's nothing much you could do the time people have no idea how long do you need to continue taking it and with all that then at the back end for the industry the challenge is sustainability because you know if you look at the ingredient of nutraceuticals they come from plant source or animal source and it's a small proportion that comes as a synthetic now as the industry grows the dependency of uh, you know the medicinal plants will go up or animals will go up and that becomes a question mark will the industry be able to sustain it as the market grows will it be able to handle this, handle the scalability so these are the question marks that needs to be addressed and there are various ways people are doing this we will cover up some of the ways that i know of currently chemistry has been able to address format so you would find some of the formats where you know ingredients have been put into bars or into food format and today in, in one of the companies reached out to us you know they wanted to create pudding but for diabetes a diabetic patient to maintain hba1c uh, so this is all chemistry bioavailability is all about chemistry biochemistry but when it comes to compliance time period discipline uh chemistry may not be able to do something in this and that's where we got to look out so i got inspired first you know i didn't have this uh imagination before but then i got inspired by biozoon which is a german company which actually came up with a 3d printer for hoods for geriatrics the problem with geriatric community is that uh, they are not able to swallow food and because they're not able to swallow food they eventually land up with consuming lesser lesser quantity of food different uh, type i mean yeah lesser quantity of food leading to malnourishment now this 3d printer actually prints the food in the format you would love to see so you know you you want cutlets or burgers whatever so it prints a burger but then it uses the ingredient where uh, in a way that uh, a consumer or a patient would would see a burger, let's take example, burger would see a burger and would smell like that, look like burger, but when you actually put it into mouth to chew it, it actually starts melting into a you know paste and gel, which can be swallowed. And the ingredients used are uh, the nutrients required to address the need of an old uh, old consumer. Now, this is very interesting because now you can enjoy what you want to eat uh, because uh, seeing is uh, so food is all about experience you know how it looks how it tastes now because the geriatrics cannot swallow it or maybe teeth problem uh, this machine serves the purpose it gives you uh, all the nutrition it makes it makes this uh, community healthy and yet they enjoy eating because they get what they actually would want to eat so this actually fired uh, imagination. And then off late for last three to four years, I have seen amazing conversions happening uh, where devices are taking nutrition to you when you want it and how much you want it. So you don't really have to think much about how to, to, how to take it, when to take it, it's the right quantity, that's not your job. So technologies have come forward offering the entire intelligence so that you just continue doing whatever you're doing throughout the day and the machine or the technology will take care of you so let's go to the first case uh 
and before I, of course, get on to the case, of course. Uh, so in the list that I said, the challenges the nutraceutical industry has, one is format and bioavailability, which is all chemistry. The rest requires technology and technology that can nudge you. So one of the studies that was done at NCED uh, actually showed that the, there's a 94% compliance uh, amongst the consumers if they get uh, if they get nudged on to consume or do a practice. So that's an interesting lead. And from that lead, let's get into a case study, case one. This is an American company, uh, Life Fuels. And as you can see, it's a, it's a smart bottle. Uh, I would not call it smart bottle, but it's a pretty cool bottle, which you can carry along in your gym or to your office and so on. What it does is it, you know, it's got electrolytes, vitamins, uh, and, and trace elements. So three cartridges that just fit into the machine. And using an app, you can actually plan your day because you know when you're gonna go to gym, when you're gonna go to office, when do you have lunch, you know your day-to-day -day routine. All you need to do is just feed in the information on the app and then the app programs when the ingredients are needed. So like if you're going to gym, you need electrolytes. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, you might need trace elements or whatever thing is that you don't have to carry capsules you don't have to worry about what to consume when because all you want to do is is already recorded in your app and you're good to go you can just carry a bottle keep filling water when you want it and rest of the work is done by the technology and the device the challenge here uh, is that it's good if you're very health conscious but for commoners like us, uh, it may become a challenge because you know it's it's not helping you to decide. It's in fact asking you to decide for yourself. And if you're not too much knowledgeable about the subject, you could end up doing something wrong. And electrolytes on the wrong side could be harmful for your health. Um, it may not, so this bottle, what I've seen is that it does not even tell how much to take and when to take and so on. So it expects you to, you know, give, give instructions. So this is the challenge, but then it still is an amazing option because uh, vitamin, mineral supplements, trust me, if you were to consume capsule tablets, uh, you would keep skipping most of the days because it's not a habit. But carrying a bottle, and you'll find most of people carrying shakers to gym. This is much better because not only you can take it to gym, but you can take it to your office, workplace, and so on. It looks it looks nice. Let's go to the another uh, you know innovation that actually got launched in 2018, um, and it's a desktop version, but pretty smart, pretty interesting. Go mix fit. And what is interesting is that uh, it uses multiple data and it uses artificial intelligence. So it does not really, it doesn't want you to do anything. It decides what your body needs and you just need to keep drinking water, that's it. And what it does is so it captures data from, so when you buy this equipment, you are of course supposed to get your nutrigenomics uh, uh, test done. And then of course, uh, since this AI starts capturing the food that you eat, so you need to keep taking photographs of what you're eating, uh, and it starts making uh, interpretation based on nutrigenomics data as well as the food that you are consuming, and starts interpreting during the day what are the potential ingredients, oh, sorry, uh, elements, vitamins, uh, or actually ingredients that may go short in your body. So. It uses AI to make predictions and they claim that it's 90% correct, so it's just actually not bad. And you can consume, uh, all you have to do is just plug in uh, the glass and it will fill up the water. And as it fills the water, it infuses, so it's got multiple cartridges inside it and with uh, various key elements and they get, just get infused into the water along with flavor. And you really don't have to, do anything else. All you need to do is keep taking photographs of what you're eating. That's the only work you expect it to do. And it says that while you're drinking water, drink from this machine because this machine knows too much about your body and it'll keep filling your body with ingredients at the right time when it knows that you're going down on that. So pretty smart. 
what we did is uh, we picked up learnings from these two and we started you know imagining that while this is good the challenge here is it's not mobile you cannot carry this along all over the place and compliance could be an issue because you know you have it in house and you don't want and then how are you going to have it in office and if you have it in office are you going to do or you buy three four and put it in all the places that you go what uh i uh and the team that we start working on we're looking at how can we develop technology of conversions that makes consumers use it any time of day and night and that's when we started working on this technology and we and this is a product being developed in india uh in the prototype format right now but this is a smart bottle it's a 300 ml bottle uh, of which 50 ml part is blocked out and so you have 250 ml available the good thing is it's a bottle just a small 300 ml bottle and it can fit into your laptop bag purse and you of course you can carry it anywhere around the uniqueness here is that when you hold this bottle so it's a metallic bottle and it's got a lot of sensors all around it so when you hold the bottle to drink water it it reads your pulse reading and it also reads your vpk signal so vpk signal is mostly the ayurveda terminology of wap pitta kapha signals and it uses this algorithm to actually make prediction of what is your metabolic rate now and based on the so it's a again uses ai so it may take about two weeks before it starts really working like an intelligent bottle but then as you keep holding it during various time of the day to drink water through this bottle, it starts developing data and predicting during the what part of the day you would feel sluggish or your metabolic rate will go down, your performance activity during the day may go down. And based on that uh, interpretation, it starts releasing phytoactives into the water in multiple doses so that, you know, if if it makes an interpretation that 3 p.m. you're going to go slow, your productive will you will come down, your metabolic rates will come down, and it makes a prediction that it knows that you will at least consume water two times, it will start releasing doses split into two times, so that by the time 3 p.m. comes, the bioavailability of that active ingredient would be good enough in the bloodstream to keep your metabolic rate uh, pretty active. Okay, so you feel you feel as active uh, throughout the day, not realizing that the bottle made uh, interpretation, took a decision and actually uh, chose ingredients to keep you active throughout the day. While you, all you have to do is keep drinking water. And this bottle is slightly more intelligent because it also nudges you. So if you forgot to drink water, because we don't know whether we are optimally hydrated or not. So if this bottle starts vibrating, and it knows that at this time gap, if you have not consumed water, it'll start vibrating, nudging you to, yes, it reminds you, you've got to have water, so you consume water. To make it more Indian savvy, and for that matter, it will work for anyone, is this bottle can actually heat up liquid inside up to 70 degrees and cool up to 20 degrees. We couldn't, we haven't broken the, technology to or crack the code to bring it below 20 but then up to 20 it can be cooled so you know you can heat up 70 cool it up to 20 degrees and of course uh the 50 ml area which is locked out actually has cartridges three to four active ingredients of nutraceuticals uh mostly from phyto extracts and they have they are in you know nano nanoparticles which are just infused at the right quantity so that it does not really interfere with the taste of water or uh, the maximum you can consume in this is coffee or tea so either of the thing the taste should not get affected and that's uh, being taken care of uh now besides this it also allows you well you find a person who is pretty active throughout the day and uh, and you find that the VPK signals that he or she has through that bottle is similar to yours. And you probably get tempted to follow the same format that that bottle is giving to that person because this guy is too active 
all you could do is uh, so we use nft technology so typically you know just touch this bottle to that bottle for five seconds and the entire program gets copied to another bottle so you and i are on the same program uh, so it allows you copying it and as i said that is just 300 ml so it's it's good uh, it fits in anywhere it looks like any other good uh, aluminium bottle and uh, the only thing is got sensors it keeps reading we have not tried to put in too much of uh, inconvenience like doing nutrigenomics data although it's important but i don't know how many at least in india would do it or even if you look at globally so all we do is VPK signal is well established since the days of Ayurveda and now the technologies have come up which uh, allow you to read VPK signals and make interpretations that what's going in your body. Why not play around with that? And hence we have gone ahead playing with that. At the same time, yes, the pulse reading is also recorded, which is a very conventional method. So this bottle we are planning to launch uh, in uh, Supply Side West through one of our international partners. And this would be the contribution from India. It's patented of already. And uh, so this, I would not say is a disruptive innovation, but then certainly we learned a lot from the other early entrants into the market. And we looked at what consumers would want to use it. And if you think that it's going to be very expensive, trust me, it's not. Uh, uh, it would be about 18 US dollars or about what, 1800 rupees one time. Your, recurring cost of course would be the cartridge and although we're launching it for the working uh, community right now uh, and, and and the focus is uh, productivity and uh, you know uh, endurance whereas uh, eventually we'll get into launching you know cartridge for geriatric community as well as children so you know they take school water bottle uh, they might as well take this and uh, we all know because thanks to Horlicks, they have created this tagline you know taller sharper smarter so there are a lot of interesting ingredients available in the market uh, as well as from you know latest coming up in science so they could be the cartridge for the children while they have their water school uh, water they actually get uh, nutrients required for their you know healthy performance in their schools and so on so this is a convergence of artificial intelligence, phytochemistry, which is in nutraceuticals, the knowledge of device, it's all working together to serve one end user, which is consumer or a patient. I was talking about uh, the ingredient sustainability. Now this, I believe biotechnology has a lot to play in this. And, uh, for example, you know, and then this is an ocean, so you pick up anything and you could start working. So one of the things that you might have heard a lot, so when you talk of protein, they're mostly the animal based and those are milk or meat. Nowadays, of course, there's a craze for plant protein. So you've got soya and then of course, various lentils and grams, extracts and so on. But the question is, is, the current ecosystem across the world capable of delivering so much of protein at sustainable price? The question is no, because uh, it's heavily dependent on natural resources and you know they have their own limitation. The solution possibly now is laboratory based and that you would be aware that there's lots of news floating around for lab meets and so on. Yes, this, this would be a, a you know a immediate future the biotech enabled alternate proteins uh, and then what we are doing right now is uh, so if you look at uh, water so going back to water again hydration is anyway the most common thing uh, so you'll find some of the products in the market which claim that you know the water has protein so they they're flavored because protein usually will have a taste so they're flavored and protein is there and those proteins are basically protein isolates from whey which is milk based what we have been trying to do is you know develop cells in the lab so these cells to the adhesive process can create tissues leading to meats instead of doing that we have created lab i mean cells and we're dispersing into water 
to of course we're doing the stability studies but then idea is can i give you eight grams of protein in a glass of water whereas water tastes exactly like water and looks like water because the cells are microscopic so can we stabilize the cells and disperse into water and you have a protein water and as in fact the utility moves up cost comes down which is not the case in uh, milk or animal because as the utility goes up the cost will also go up because the cost of maintaining uh, natural resources is always very high you know so this is uh, again in conversion so protein where which is being developed by biotechnology and then applied into it uh, so this is how it is now very important thing you know, these i believe it's early stage but then you're welcome to comment on to uh, and i'd love to learn but ultimately you know so their devices getting into it but then what would that future be because at the end of the day device is something you still need to either wear it or carry it along consumers are usually lazy and they would want to stay away with as much as possible the extra gadgets or devices and so on so somehow the technology has to get into you into your body or into so the sky's the limit you can keep imagining so one of the things which is certainly happening is creating wet wares and thanks to the development of uh, graphene so wet wares could be the near future uh, innovation where it those could be the tissues pasted onto your skin but they have the capability of doing exactly what the device is doing and and it of course makes interpretation possibly delivers the ingredient through the patches which are put onto your body and you have you, you don't really even bother about what you're carrying so everything happens automatically or else uh, they could be so this is now you they could be uh, sprinklers that means I'm sure you use seasoning bottles onto your food, so you sprinkle on it. So these would be the smart sprinklers. The data from your wet wear will be sent to sprinklers. And while you put on your seasoning onto your food, it also delivers the active ingredients onto the food. So when you consume the food, of course, it doesn't alter the taste of the food. But when you consume the food, the ingredients moderate how an ingredient would work in the body and whatever health outcome is expected. 3D food printers, it's already happening. It will get more advanced, more consumer accessible. So there will be devices for sure, but then uh, part of it, how the data is captured would potentially be far more biotech driven. As I said, wetwares is something that will certainly happen for sure. And it's the in thing for sure. So these are some of the thoughts that I wanted to share that how important is convergence and nutraceutical industry is the largest anywhere going to take over pharmaceuticals. How can the supporting industry of biotech and medtech come forward to serve this industry? Because larger the industry, larger the business, larger the, uh, the more is the you know uh, opportunity to bring down the cost and of course uh, the utility of it. And as I said, of the major concerns in nutraceuticals, the com uh, compliance, personalization, optimization, habit influencing, all this can only be achieved through the AI and the devices. And hence, otherwise this was completely untouched territory. That's about it for now. And uh, over to you if you have any questions. And yes, if you want to connect on Nutrify India, you have the email ID as well as of course uh, the WhatsApp number. Thanks.